Hey, it's Tyler at CrazyAboutCompost.com and today's topic is plastic contamination in your finished compost. This is a topic that I've learned a lot about over the last couple years and I admit my previous perspective was very optimistic and definitely a little naive. In the face of knowing the facts that plastics are a total problem, they are bioaccumulating in the food chain, they're in our oceans, they're everywhere. So basically what I wanted to talk to you about is how to minimize this contamination in your compost and the reasons why. So basically I formerly was adding stuff like ice cream cartons, paper cups when I found them on the ground uh, outside. I would uh, pick them up and put them in the compost. Chinese food cartons. And these are examples of plastic lined paper products. So this is stuff where if you put it in the recycling, chances are it's going to be viewed as contamination and it will end up just going to the landfill. So my thinking was, why not put it in the compost, let all the critters eat all the paper off of it, and then the plastic that remains, I'll pull it out when the process is done. But the problem is, is that plastics don't degrade properly. They don't really degrade at all, actually. And when they flake apart into little pieces, they could be so small, like 100 microns in size. There's just no way you're going to be able to get all the plastics out of your soil. So why introduce them in the first place? So that's the issue. So my plan was just to kind of try and screen the stuff out. But ultimately, it's really difficult, and you're just not going to get all the crap out of there. The same goes for bioplastics, too. I was composting proper ASTM D6400 uh, compostable bags. I was throwing them in the compost pile. I had hot temperatures for a sustained period of time, and I was able to break them down pretty well, but I wasn't able to break them down perfectly, so I was left with a bunch of green crap. Actually, why don't I show that to you now? Here's some examples of contamination in my finished compost pile. Here's some interesting examples in my finished compost. I like to pick up people's litter, so that includes a lot of paper cups that I was throwing in here, which I don't do anymore. So here's one. Here's the skeleton remaining from a paper cup. Here's another liner of some sort. And remember, it's cool that I can pick all this out, but what am I not finding? Because this obviously isn't the whole thing. Lesson learned. And this is definitely an ASTM D6400 compostable bag. Not finished yet. It clearly was having success in the pile because I was able to keep up some good temperatures, but even still, wasn't able to get it all up to this point. So that's not good. So it looks like, you know, most of the pile here is okay. But there's definitely some uh, contamination in here. Here's a little piece of plastic. So that's worrisome. And that's why it's important to be picky with what we add to our compost. Big lesson learned for me. So the contamination that you saw was just the tip of the iceberg. As I kept digging down and down, I ended up getting a nice pile of all this plastic crap. And that was just the stuff I could see. So going forward, that's what I want to avoid, and that's what I want you to avoid. So how do we do that? Well, pretty much the paper product that you add to your piles, try and limit it. Limit it to napkins, paper towels, tissues. Those three forms of paper are paper fiber that's in its last use. If you were to put those in your recycling bin, that would just be considered contamination. It wouldn't get recycled again because... That's why it's in those forms. It's, it's the last use of that paper fiber. Paper fiber only has so many uses. So those, those are okay. So if you have a napkin and you're eating or whatever and it has some food on it, hey, perfect. Uh, but then for other sources, I had a great craving for Chinese food the other night at two in the morning. But when I go, I don't order over the phone. I actually show up and then I give them my own container that I brought from home. Sure, they laugh at me and so does everyone else that's around, but I really don't care, whatever. Um, it's better than picking up some styrofoam or one of those paper containers with the little metal handle on the top. It's got plastic. So before, you know, I would have thrown that in the pile, but I'm not doing that anymore. I'm telling you, there's, there's no need to be putting plastic in our compost. 
So this pile with all that crap in it, uh, I screened it out the best I could and I'm just using it for horticultural purposes. So I'm not trying to grow carrots with it or basil or anything like that. I just don't want that plastic getting in there. You got to minimize that. And it's hard to be upbeat about it too because plastics are everywhere now. But that's the great thing about composting compared to recycling is that the control is in your hands. With composting, I control what goes into it, I monitor the pile in my own yard, and I get the finished product. I don't have to rely on anyone else to compost. And even better, almost half of our landfills are organic material, whether it's yard waste, food waste, or even some of that paper product, or even cardboard. Although I recommend recycling cardboard first, but if it's you know a pizza box that's covered in food, why not just rip it up and add it to your compost? It'll be just fine. So, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Does it make sense? I hope it does. Um, again, it's kind of weird looking back and seeing how optimistic I was and just adding that stuff, thinking I could actually remove the plastic at the end. Don't do that. It's just not the case. You need to get pickier with your plastics. And anytime you're about to take on a paper product that could have that plastic liner, think if you can kind of stop that behavior. Another obvious one, of course, would be with coffee. We go through millions and millions of single-use coffee cups every single day. Just have your own mug, for example. Um, you might even save a quarter, but either way, it's just what we should be doing. Um, and that's simple behavior. You've heard it a million times, but there's a reason, because it actually is important. And try and multiply that out, and look at other times where you may get uh, plastic-lined paper. And you'll know that it's not lined with paper if it says that it's a compostable product. Um, you may be able to rip the paper in half and see if there's anything in there, but even that's not the best test. So I would just say err on the side of caution. There is some really good research out there that's been published to show the effects of bioplastics. And again, our landfills are made up of so much organic material. Composting is by far the most important activity that we could be doing at home. And I do want to make this as easy as possible for you because trust me, composting, it's like the earth's oldest process and there's no need for it to be hard. I just make these videos to kind of geek out on all the fine tuning. Um, but if you have any questions about this stuff or anything you know, more basic, I just want you to be able to get in touch and I will help you. Also, if you haven't, check out my free composting course that you can sign up for at crazyaboutcompost.com. It's a seven-day email course that goes through all the steps to get you set up. Depending on your situation, you know, whether you want to compost inside with worms or you want to compost in a balcony and you don't have a lot of space, or if you want to use big compost bins like me and try and really get hot temperatures and compost as much stuff as possible. So either way, I love this stuff. This is what I'm here for. And uh, just please feel free to leave a comment, ask questions, hit the like button. And again, sign up for my course, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.